OK, that's fine. OK, so my name is Post Squidward. Uh, I run Majora's Mask, any percents. Uh, the first thing I want to do is introduce my couch. If you guys want to introduce yourselves, go I'm, for it. I'm Majin Phil. I'm the sausage. I'm Thomas. And this is the human protractor. He's, he doesn't have a mic, but he's there. He's, um, <laughs> but yes. Very so, um, yeah. I am very excited to do this run. I've been grinding this game for months, and I'm just very excited to showcase the new stuff that's going on. Uh, the one thing I want to say is um, the, in order to complete this game, you have to visit the four temples and complete all of the temples, and then that unlocks uh, being able to go to the moon. And um, yeah, I just wanted to give like a basic outline of what it means to complete the game. And uh, Phil is actually going to uh, give us an insight on the evolution of the game itself. Um, so go ahead. Okay, so in 2014, ZFG did a speed run of this uh, any percent. And back then, he completed the game at AGDQ 2014 in about an hour and 40 minutes approximately. I'm not exactly sure on the exact time, but it was mm -hmm. around that. And then, um, it was literally almost the next day, I think two days later or something, a massive trick was found known as Index Warp, which we'll go into a little bit later. And it saved tons of minutes on the run. And it was super unfortunate because he wasn't able to showcase that during his run, and so it had to be done again. So the following year, in 2015, I submitted Majora's Mask any percent, and it got in, and we did the run again using the new trick, and we were able to get the time from a 140 down to a 135. But this time, that was the last time the run was done in 2015. So it's been almost, it's been four years since a run of this has been performed at GDQ. And now, Pope over here is gonna try and beat the game in under an hour, 20 minutes. Which is a huge, that's a massive leap. That's a 15 minute leap over what was done in 2015. So how did we save so much time over all of that, all of those years? And there was about three or four big things that happened that caused that time save to happen. And the first one was um, the fact that we no longer use the hook shot to beat the game. The hook shot is now useless, and he's going to beat the entire game without it. Mm -hmm. So uh, that is really nice because it allows him to skip the pirate's fortress, and uh, which is a huge time save. That's a big, big detour that you have to take in order to collect right. Zora eggs and stuff, and as well get the hook shot, of course. So. Not going there saves a ton of time. The second thing that happened was something called Equip Swap was discovered in 2017. It was late 2017. And um, what that trick did was ultimately allow us to copy Zora eggs. So if you're unfamiliar with the game, you need to get seven Zora eggs to learn the new wave bossa nova. That trick, or that song, lets you get into the Great Bay Temple, which is one of the temples we got to beat. So. Um, instead of having to go and get each egg individually, we're just going to get one, and then he's going to copy it six times, get the song, and save a ton of time instead of going to get the other ones. And, and the cool thing is, like, that cut out one of the most boring parts of the run. So it was like the perfect yes. discovery. Yeah, that part was always... more interesting. Because before we had to go around and get all the Zora eggs, and now we we're able to just dupe over them. So um, it definitely cuts out a huge part of the run for sure. Exactly. So that was the second thing. And then the third thing was, there's this thing now in the run, it's called the Lullaby Skip Hyper Extended Super Slide. It's as cool and as difficult as it sounds. And he's gonna do it in about 30 to 40 minutes into the run, mm -hmm. give or take. Um, and I hope you guys are super excited for it, because it was a trick that everyone kind of knew was there, but uh, nobody really had Nobody really pushed the courage for to try and do it in a mm -hmm. run until and he... this man over here <laughs> was like, guys, I did it. Yeah. <laughs> and we were all like, oh my God, how did you do that? And then he goes, yeah, it's not that difficult. And so eventually everyone was like, okay, this guy set the standard. Now we all got to do it in our runs. Right. And ever since then, it's become a thing that we all do in the run as the standard. It yes. took and like hundreds of hours of like collective grinding as a yeah. whole community. Yeah. Like it's it's an it. unbelievable trick and definitely something that it's just going to blow your mind when you see it. So it I'm excited to show you guys it. But, we used um, to think it'd be task only. Yeah, so it was, it was considered a task only trick um, about a year ago and now it's just we're just trying to do it in our runs now, so exactly. pretty cool. Um, and there's definitely some other differences too. Uh, one of the biggest things is, I don't know if you mentioned the story, Phil, but we're playing on the English version of the game now. Um, and the English version of the game actually allows us to do that uh, lullaby skip. So uh, that's definitely an interesting step for this game because we've been playing on the Japanese version for a while. Um, and this is actually the only category in the game that we know of right now that is uh, 
English uh, is the optimal. And and English is cool because it makes certain things a lot more difficult. Yeah. Um, and when we switched to English, we kind of had to learn a lot of stuff. And for instance, like there's a trick called the weird shot that we do in this run very close to the end. Mm -hmm. And if you're one frame late on a certain input for that trick, on the English version, it can crash. Mm -hmm. And I believe he's going to buffer it for safety for this run. But in the runs, he goes for it on buffers. We'll see. Yeah, there's we'll definitely see. a few differences. <laughs> There's a few differences between the Japanese version and the English version um, that is beneficial, but also it does make stuff a little bit more complicated. We'll, we're not going to talk about them now, but as we as you see stuff in the run, mm -hmm. we'll explain like what would have been different if we had done it on the Japanese version. Yeah, we'll mention English only tricks exactly. uh, that are exclusive to this version. Um, that that super or that hyper extended super slide that you're going to see later on is actually an English only trick because um, you're able to do the trick without getting stuck on the edges. You're going to see that he's going to be stuck on some of the edges. But on English, you can keep the slide momentum going, even if you get to the corners. But on the Japanese version, you lose all of your mobility, and you get mm -hmm. stuck. And so you're not able to continue the slide. So yeah. that was a big factor in determining to use English over Japanese for the run. Right. So after about six minutes of cutscenes here, Pope finally has control of the character for an extended period of time. and. Uh, the first thing that he's going to have to do is fly across this room, but flying is pretty slow, so he's going to do a little skip down to the lower flower, and it prevents... Uh, Shout outs to the sausage yeah. for this. Uh, yeah, we're, we're going to start doing this it's in runs now. It's a nifty flower movement that saves about half a second. Mm -hmm. <laughs> sausage is the optimization master, by the way. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> no one really tried that in runs before, but I was just like, yeah. <laughs> oh, okay, we can do this. There you go. <laughs> Um, yeah, if you, if you haven't noticed, uh, or if you don't know, this game is no notorious for having a really bad long intro before it really opens up. Mm -hmm. Once it opens up, crazy stuff starts happening really quickly, but at the beginning, there's a lot of cutscenes. Yeah. Even the first, like, 20 or so minutes, there's there's a good bit of cutscenes. But then it ramps up, and it becomes extremely fast-paced, yeah, non-stop so stick around. Yeah. yeah. So we definitely need uh, some quiet here for this next trick here. I'll explain it when it's done. But... All right. <laughs> Very nice, man. Very nice. Okay. Do you want to explain that, Pope? Yeah, sure. Okay, so there's two things going on there. So the first thing that happens is um, the reason why I pause so much is because uh, cutscenes take two frames to activate in this game. So if you uh, pause buffer frame by frame through a cutscene trigger, you can actually override that cutscene uh, by going into a load zone. And um, there, uh, the reason why I was back walking to the door is because of a... Uh, recent optimization that we put into runs called Z-Slide. And uh, essentially what it is, is it's just me um, targeting on every other frame. And uh, that momentum propels me forward faster than if I were to just spin to the door. Yeah, if, so. if you watch like a tool-assisted run of this game, you'll see them doing Z-Slides all over the place. But if you're doing it without pause buffering, you have to just press the press target and then release target. Every frame you have to press, release, press, release. So it's just not really practical to do it at RTA. But, um, you also may, buffering that he can. Yeah. You yeah. also may have noticed that Pope reset his console as soon as he entered clock down. He did that to skip a cutscene um, because the English text on the English version is slow. Um, so he resets the console and uh, he saves about a second because the cutscene's a little mm -hmm. bit longer than it takes to boot the game. Shout out to Nana, by the way. Yeah, so, so right now he's talking to Nana, which is <laughs> AKA Grandma. And Grandma does something that uh, allows us to get the ocarina fast. The objective of this part of the run is to become a human again. Mm -hmm. And we have to get the ocarina as fast as possible. The fastest way to do that is to make it the final day, which you can do by picking the second option on talking to Grandma. Mm -hmm. And now he's gonna make his way over to West Clock Town, where he's gonna talk to the Scarecrow, and the Scarecrow is gonna make it nighttime. And then we only have to wait a short amount of time until midnight which is when the clock tower opens so he can go get the ocarina. And he'll, he'll uh, make good use of that time, that extra time that he has to kill, mm -hmm. by going out to Termina Field with a little uh, trick where you can just backwalk past the guard yeah. in a certain spot. 
and then he will go and collect rupees that he'll use later next cycle when he needs to buy bombs, mm -hmm. and he'll also go to a certain uh, area for reasons that we'll explain later. Yeah. It's very complicated. Bombs are crucial to uh, Zelda speedruns, or at least the 3D Zelda yes. speedruns, so um, the explosive count for this run is actually very tight, so if you'll notice that when we get bomb choosing bombs, uh, there's not going to be a whole lot of room for error. A lot of the tricks in this run are done with damage sources. Like, anything that can damage you, you can perform a trick off of it. So it's really convenient that bombs are basically a, a damage source you can just take with you no matter what, because you just use a bomb and then use the damage source that it gives off the explosion and perform one of the tricks that you could honestly just do off an enemy or off of anything that uh, damages you. Mm -hmm. And since, since bombs are so important, bomb shop trips and optimizing how many times you go to the bomb shop and when you go to the bomb shop to refill and when you get bomb drops from grass, et cetera, that's, that's very important for routing this game, and um, you have to keep track of that a lot. There are some luck elements to it, too. You, sometimes in the run, you have to d hope that you get a bomb drop from certain things, mm -hmm. and, and sometimes you can get pretty unlucky and not get the right amount of bombs, and it, it can actually kill your run once in a while. It's nice guard, by the way. Unlucky. There we go. The guard nice. lets you in. Shout out to the guard. Yeah. <laughs> So in this area, when you enter Termina Field, uh, in the, this is supposed to be the tutorial version of the game, um, enemies actually don't spawn in Termina Field, and uh, you're really only able to go and get rupees. So Pope is going to try to get 60 rupees here in Termina Field um, before he goes back to the clock town to defeat the Skull Clid. If he doesn't get 60 rupees, normally he would just press the reset button right yeah. there, bad That's, RNG, try again. It's about a 15, 20 second time loss if he doesn't get 60 rupees. Yeah. Um, but we're going to keep going. And uh, once the clock strikes midnight and that uh, clock tower cutscene triggers, that's when all of the stuff in Termina appears, like the enemies and everything. Yeah. So aside from getting rupees, the other thing that he has to do is he has to save the Great Fairy, because in order to get the ocarina from Skull Kid at the top of clock tower, he needs to shoot the Great Fairy with a magic bubble, and you, or you shoot the Skull Kid with a magic bubble. And um, so he got that fairy in East Clock Town. So, and, uh, also, I really like Milk Road a lot, so we're just going to go in there and just take a look at it and leave. Just and check it out. Just yeah, pop it's, in and pop just, out. Yeah. Just <laughs> hype for Milk Road, dude. Yeah, let's go. Go Milk Road. Milk, Milk Road, Road hype. Yeah, get those blues in there. Yeah, give me some blues. Also, you may have noticed him backwalking a lot. If you're, if you're traveling a long distance, you're going to backwalk in this game unless you have some kind of glitch to do. Yeah, um, backwalking is the fastest form of movement that's not induced by a glitch. A lot of people... Click mask. Exactly. A lot of people think, oh, why don't you get the bunny hood? Actually, backwalking is the same speed as running with the bunny hood, so mm -hmm. you don't need There are need very it. few situations in this game where the bunny hood is actually optimal. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. Okay. All right, we need 13 from this bush. I believe. Let's Get go. good RNG. Might come up a little short here, so I'm going to have to... Yep, that's so not that big that's deal. not a big deal. No, no. that's not bad. We're just going to go over here and get a couple extra rupees. Um, so the goal... Definitely going to be a little late to the clock tower, but... Yeah, the goal here is to get to the clock tower on time, like right when the door opens, mm -hmm. um, after doing all this other stuff. The timing is very precise to go out and determine I get yes. 60 rupees, and then you really only have a couple seconds to waste uh, if you're going to make it on time. Okay, uh, we can actually read some donations right now if you have any donations ready. Hi there. <laughs> <laughs> I've got some great donations for you guys. Do I have a minute? Yeah. I do. Yeah, go for it. Okay, great. Here we go. <laughs> we have $123.45 from Sean Tron, <clears throat> who says... Hi, my name is Link with the plan. I collect rupees, my dude, I'm the man. Hyrule Castle, my lady sits. I will save her with power mitts. Watch out, Ganon, I'm coming for ya. Bow, sword, and slingshot for ya. Another 10 rupees if this is read to the group. Let's go runners and workers on this 24-7 loop. Right. That was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> We've also got a $500 donation. Let's from go. Shenpai. Let's go. <laughs> Shenpai says, hey guys, second time donating for a GDQ and I had to do it during Majora's Mask. Thank you guys for everything you do and a big shout out to my Discord who is watching this event with me. Love you guys and good luck to the runner. Mm -hmm. 
So this game operates on three-day cycles, and um, what Pope is doing is depositing rupees into the bank. For some reason, this bank doesn't obey the laws of time, so he's going to play the Song of Time um, on the final day and prevent the game or pre prevent the room, uh, the moon, excuse me, from crashing into the world. And it'll start on the first day, but all the rupees will still be there on the first day. So we're going to use those to buy explosives. Now, normally, to get into the clock tower, you have to do a whole series of events, like talk to the bomber kids, and you have to complete the like the challenge that they give, which is to find them within the three-day period, get the code, then you got to get a moon's tier, and then you got to take the moon's tier, trade it to the Deku scrub right there in the corner in South Clock Town, and then you can use that flower to get to the clock tower staircase that takes you up to where the skull kit is. But that takes a really long time, so we're just going to skip all of that and perform a nice little trick called a gainer. It's a one-frame trick, and it's just a backflip going forward, and you can just skip it all like that, nice and easy. I never get that first try, and of course I get it first try here. Perfect. <laughs> yeah. It's the run, bro. Yes, it's the run. It's the run. All right, so this, this first, like, 20, 25 minutes is a little slow. Um, it's just the whole process of transforming back into human. Um, and then as soon as we turn into human, it's going to just really pick up here. Um, so there's going to be definitely a series of very difficult tricks coming up here. Yeah, it's going to be hard to explain it all on the fly. Yeah, it there's is. so much happening at once. So maybe we should go ahead and explain like index warp, for instance. Yeah, go for it. Yeah, go for it. sure. Um, yeah, I, I, guess, I guess we'll give it a shot. Yeah. So um, this game has owl statues. And you hit those owl statues. And then when you learn Song of Soaring, you can soar to the owl statues that you've hit. So if you go into West Clock Town, you can look through this loading zone into South Clock Town and see an owl statue there. And it's the owl statue that's normally there in South Clocktown, you might think. But it's actually because West Clocktown is a different map, they had to put a different owl statue there. And we call that Hidden Owl. And so that, that owl statue has these certain properties that let us do a glitch called Index Warp. So the, one of the first things he's going to do once he gets explosives is go out of bounds and around this big loading zone and go and hit this owl statue. And then later, that will allow him to use this Index Warp trick to soar to places that he's never been before. So for instance, if he has been to Goron Village, he will have the Goron Village uh, point on his pause menu map. He'll go into the pause menu, select that point, unpause and play Song of Soaring, and it'll just default to Stone Tower. And he can soar mm -hmm. to, the stop, to the top of Stone Tower immediately yeah, so, without having been there. So pretty much every single location on the map correlates to somewhere that you're going to travel when you play the Song of Soaring. Mm -hmm. And that's how you can choose where you want to go without ever being there in the first place. So that was one of the big differences between the run in 2014 by ZFG and the 2015 run the following year, was that Index Warp allowed us to sequence break and travel to all these locations without having to actually go and activate these owl statues. And it removed some really difficult parts, like climbing Stone Tower, for instance. Climbing Stone Tower, it was extremely slow yeah. and extremely yes. challenging Definitely. and used a lot of explosives. Mm -hmm. Uh, but yeah, that's also a reason, uh, I don't know if you guys said this, but why I went into Milk Road. I do like Milk Road, but I went in there for a reason, because it's going to take me to Snowhead later. So mm -hmm. that location corresponds to something he's going to use later right. on. Exactly. So one other thing to mention is that um, there's a couple criteria for this Index Warp to work, and that is that he's not allowed to hit any other owl statues. Otherwise, it cancels out the trick. So if you see him hit another owl statue, it's going to be a problem, because he's not going to be able to travel anywhere <laughs> that will not except have. for that one spot. So that won't happen. <laughs> And, of course, the other criteria is that he has to have the locations available on the map, which is why he went and activated them in the first place. Mm -hmm. I think the first time you'll see it is he will go to Deku Palace, and then he'll learn Song of Soaring and immediately soar using the Deku Palace map point, which takes you to Mountain Village, yep. which is completely far away from... <laughs> So again, Pope just reset the console there because there's a really long cutscene that basically flashbacks uh, and shows you everything that you did up until that point. Because in this game, in Majora's Mask, um, Song of Time actually resets the three-day cycle, whereas in OOT it just opens the uh, Temple of Time. I thought he reset because it was a bad run. <laughs> <laughs> Not yet. But <laughs> no, it's good so far. All right, so... So last chunk of cutscene here. Yeah, last chunk of cutscene, mm -hmm. and then we're going to get going here. Yeah, then it picks up. This might be a good time to uh, get some donations in. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. That's perfect. I was about to say, I have a lot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can read for you guys. <laughs> yeah, go for it. We have a $20 donation from Chamaleon, or Lion, who says, looking forward to the Majora's Mask run. Thanks to all the runners for making the coming weeks work more entertaining. <laughs> we have... A $25 donation from Xantor. He says, I just have 
to leave a donation during the best Zelda game. Good luck on your run, Pope Squidward. Great name, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> we have a $50 donation from Grandma. Grandma. <laughs> she says, can't wait to see the new tricks. MM is my favorite game and my, uh, my favorite game from my childhood, and I always love seeing it run at GDQs. Good luck, my dude. We also have a $200 donation from Mr. Barry, who says, yeah. <laughs> Mr. Barry says, hey, HGDQ, longtime watcher, first time attending. Seeing that my favorite Zelda game is being played right now, I knew I had to donate now. Thank you very much for all you do. Get hype! Hype! <laughs> <laughs> we also have a $25 donation from Lito290, who says, wow, Persona 5's prequel looks completely different. Guess that's what they meant by beneath the mask? Couldn't resist the appeal of that amazing Breath of the Wild print and the ability to help PCF. Good luck, Pope Squidward. I've got more if you've got time. Yeah, go for it. Go for <laughs> it. We're almost done here with these cutscenes, but go for it. No worries. We have $50 from Goblas, who says, can't wait for the Majora's Mask speedrun. I never met my grandma because of cancer, and I'm so happy that video games are making such a large difference in the fight against the biggest boss of all, cancer. We've got a $5 donation from your bro, Bri. Bri? 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 Bri, oh, Bri, Bri yeah. Bri, I see. It says, <laughs> your brother Brian here. Shine like the beautiful j style you are, Pope. <laughs> <laughs> and show people what MM is about. And hide to Zippo behind the couch, winky face. <laughs> <clears throat> Okay, so we are finishing up these cutscenes here, um, and finally back to human, just getting into the groove here. It's definitely going to pick up, so. So right now what he's going to do is, as soon as he exits the clock tower, he's going to go and he's going to purchase explosives. He's going to purchase a bomb bag, which is going to give him 20 bombs and 10 bomb shoes. Well, he needs more rupees first. Yeah, he's going to get the rupees. He's going to use the rupees that he, uh, he's going to get rupees from the East Clock Town chest, right? Yeah. And then yes. he's going to withdraw the ones afterwards from the bank that he deposited in the yeah. first cycle. Yeah, so, right. so what I was describing about going out of bounds and hitting the hidden owl, that takes a lot of explosives. So he gets like a full set of explosives as much as he can get um, mm -hmm. with the rupees that he's going to get from this chest. And then he'll go back and refill his bomb chews with the... Uh, the rupees that he had from first cycle. Yeah. So we should explain what he's going to do to actually get to that owl statue. And um, he's going to do two tricks. The first one is called Infinite Sword Glitch. It's one of the most common glitches known in 3D Zelda games. It's primarily Ocarina of Time in we'll, this one. We'll call it ISG because yeah. we'll talk about it a lot. It's yeah. going to be used very often. We'll see it um, of times. So ISG is a glitch that lets your sword swing infinitely. and. When you swing your sword in this game, it allows you to, it prevents you from falling off edges. And so when you shield something like a damage source, and in this case it's going to be bombs and bomb chews exploding, the, uh, the infinite sword glitch treats you shielding it as if you're standing on a pixel of ground. So you can use that to hover in the, in the, in the air in the game and allow you to just kind of staircase your way up a wall or something or anywhere you need to reach that is unreachable normally and then kind of use other tricks with bombs that you're going to see in a second to, mm -hmm. you know, clear big distances and big gaps that would otherwise void you out if you go out of bounds. And the way you get Infinite Sword Glitch is by inter uh, interrupting your slash animation. So he's going to do that right here off the banker. So you can see the sword when it went, when he put it back, you see how it had like a white glow to it? That's how, it, that's an indicator that he has the Infinite Sword Glitch sword. You can't see anything different with Link because the sword actually isn't visible right now. He's tucked it away. But you're going to notice right now when he does a backflip and shields a bomb chew, he starts hovering. Mm -hmm. So as long as he maintains that glitch, he'll keep hovering. This is called a mega flip. It's a backflip that's mega. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and now index warp is activated. Mega Flip is one of the, uh, the harder of the more basic tricks, and uh, that's one of the hard things about this route. It uses a lot of Mega Flips. Mm -hmm. um, we, we skip picking up a lot of boss keys by like clipping out of bounds, 
in a uh, in a dungeon and then using a bunch of mega flips to cover a bunch of distance yeah. and just get to like a loading zone that's out of bounds. Now what Pope just did there is he actually bought two stacks of bomb chews with only 69 rupees when each stack is supposed to be 40 rupees. So you're supposed to have 80, but the game counts one rupee one frame at a time. And if he mashes fast enough, uh, the game thinks he has enough for two stacks. It's called the speedrunner's discount. Yes. <laughs> All right, so kind of a big trick coming up here. So this is called a hyper-extended super slide. I mentioned this at the start of the run. Mm -hmm. It allows us to slide at a very high speed. It maintains the, the, the speed that Link generates off of the damage source that he got nice. uh, from the bomb. Hole in one. We got a hole in one. This trick here is uh, pretty difficult, so we're going to be quiet. I'm actually going to do that first, just be safe. Yeah. Fantastic. Beautiful. Okay, very nice. Okay. So, in this game, all of those grottos are actually all loaded. When you enter one grotto, they're all loaded. They're just kind of invisible. You can't see the walls. So if you can clip out of bounds in one grotto, you can end up in another grotto. So he did some mega flips to cover that distance. Very nice parkour. <laughs> and now we're in a completely different part of the, ga of the yeah. game's map. And uh, the interesting thing about that grotto is it's um, only accessible normally in the Japanese version of the game. It's still in the English version of the game, but the hole in the ground isn't there. So uh, he just exits out of the grotto, and it's like he exited out of nothing. Yeah, I don't know why they closed that grotto. They just made it different on the English version. Yeah. But in Japanese, you can go back inside of it. Yeah. And, and that's one of the um, difficult parts of running this game on the English version. Um, if you miss ISG on the first try after exiting that grotto, you can't just go back into the grotto and reset the the map. So yeah, the timing for that the timing for that hovering that he just did is extremely precise because mm -hmm. he has to get onto that platform as uh, as it starts to rise. Not to mention that that platform is actually really strange because if you're too high and you try to side hop and land on the platform, you won't clip on top of it, and if you're too low, you'll you'll go underneath. So you have to be like right in the middle of those two ranges in order to get on top. Yeah. He made it look easy, though. Yeah, that was really good. <laughs> yeah, that's definitely a scary one. That one and some of the bossy skips coming up definitely are a bit scary too. But that that's definitely a big trick that we made it through. So, so this is the I'm first place. That. The first place we come after Clock Town because he needs this to enter Woodfall Temple later. This this song that he just learned, mm -hmm. and also getting the Deku Palace map point, like I mentioned earlier, allows him to uh, play Song of Soaring and go to Mountain Village through the Index Warp glitch, and that will that will help with some other stuff later. Yeah. Yeah, right now there's no way to get into Woodfall Temple optimally without Sonata of Awakening, so this is kind of a pit stop we got to take. Yeah. Okay, so we're just moving on over here to uh, get the Song of Soaring, mm -hmm. um, and it's going to allow us to just go everywhere to places that we haven't even been. Here's a nice that. little trick. Yeah. <laughs> like roll off of the lily pad and you kind of pop up there. Yeah, clip onto the rock. There might be time to squeeze in like a donation yeah, or two. Definitely. Uh, you keep reading my mind. I was about <laughs> to ask because I have a one hundred dollar donation from your a number one mom. Ooh, That's my mom. That's, That's his actual real mom. mom. <laughs> his actual mom, Thanks. who says, "Go Pope." <laughs> Such a nice mom. We've also got a five hundred dollar donation. Ooh. Wow. <laughs> this is from Thu Ox, who says, good RNG. <laughs> Please. <laughs> Please. <laughs> Please. OK, so the first place he's going to go after this is Mountain Village, like Kasasa said before. And in order to do that, the point on the map that correlates to Mountain Village is actually Woodfall, or Southern Swamp, right? Deku Palace. Deku Palace. Oh, Deku Palace, I'm sorry. Yeah, Deku Palace. And so he puts the cursor on Deku Palace, and then soars, and then it automatically puts the cursor on that area that wasn't shown already. It was still grayed out because he hasn't been there yet. One kind of scary thing, when you bring up that, uh, that map that comes up when you play Song of Soaring, if you've only hit Hidden Owl, if you touch the control stick at all, the game will crash. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, so be, you have to be very, be very careful he doesn't crash the game. This is a trick called a super slide, which is similar to a Hest, except you go in a straight line, uh, so it's a little bit faster. Oh, yeah, so hyperextended super slide we're going to refer to as a Hess just to make it fast, because we're also going to see that a couple times. But yeah, the super slide has the same speed as a, as a Hess, but the difference is you can't turn with it. And if you choose to turn with it, you're going to lose a little bit of that speed. So sometimes it's better to do one over the other, depending on whether or not you need to turn or not. That, so, that super slide in particular is really difficult. In yeah, of, like, and it, timing, that one is, angle. In, the, in those two instances, it's better to super slide because super slides are a little bit easier to do, and he just had to go straight, so there was no reason to try for the different one. Yeah. So he just made a really long detour just to get this one bomb drop from a snowball. Mm -hmm. yes. It took like a minute to <laughs> get here just like to get it. this bomb drop. But it's because explosives are really tight, so if uh, any opportunity any to get opportunity. bombs that doesn't lose too much time, we take. But but no, really, the uh, the Goron Village point lets us sort of to Stone Tower later, which we mentioned, and also there just happened to be two really convenient bomb drops in that little trip from Mountain Village to Goron Village, so he mm -hmm. uses that opportunity to stock up. Exactly. So you might notice that he played Song of Soaring, and then he went to Great Bay, but he didn't actually go to the pause menu and put the cursor on a specific point of the map. And that's because the Hidden Owl actually defaults to Great Bay. So he doesn't have to do anything on the pause menu. Mm -hmm. The funny thing about the Hidden Owl was that it's actually been around forever, since I think before 2010, actually. It's, yeah. been, it's been known for a really long time. But it wasn't until 2015 that people realized they could use that owl to go to mm -hmm. different parts. They just thought it was useful to go to Great Bay and only Great Bay. Now, he's playing the Song of Double Time here to skip a cutscene. This is actually an English uh, version only trick, but... Um the Zora will just walk up the beach very, very slowly. It takes a lot of time, and it's just faster to play song at double it's time. It's the equivalent of the Zora King scooching in Ocarina of Time. Yeah. It's like the longest <laughs> so thing ever. I think it's longer, actually. I've prepared <laughs> yeah. a little something for this moment. <laughs> this is a original, sort of, by post Shout-outs to Enop, who always plays this song on the piano. <laughs> That is a very long, unskippable cutscene. Uh, right, we, we, we gotta we fill it in with something, make good you know. Use of the time. <laughs> yeah. I was gonna bring my recorder along with the sausage, but we decided that that was gonna be the move instead. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so we are headed to the first temple now, mm -hmm. uh, Woodfall. It is um, definitely gonna start to pick up here even more than it already has, yeah. um, and it's just gonna definitely. I'm probably not gonna be able to talk that much. I'm gonna let mm -hmm. you guys take over as much so, as you can. So, but. Yeah, so real quick before uh, Woodfall becomes really, really difficult and we can let Pope kind of focus, the, the premise of Woodfall, there's two main objectives. The first one is get the bow and the second one is beat the temple mm -hmm. by defeating Odoloa. So to get the bow, we have to get to the second floor of the temple and that requires typically a large majority of little puzzles that we have to solve. But uh, using those mega flips that we saw earlier, we can actually get to the second floor very, very fast, get the bow, and complete the temple in, I think, like five to six minutes. Not even. I think it's, even faster I think it's faster. And another interesting thing about Any% percent is we actually only need two masks to do the entire run. Yeah, so we have all the masks. Now that we have Zora masks, the, the we're 30, not getting any of the other ones. Yep, yep. two mask run. Yep. Interesting to note, actually, is um, there's actually no uh, known way for us to get into this temple other than getting this sonata. Same with uh, New Wave Bossa Nova getting into Great Bay Temple, but um, Lullaby Skip, like we're, we're able to skip that, and the, uh, uh, the Elegy, Elegy of Emptiness as well uh, for Stone Tower. So. Mm -hmm. 
So another thing you might notice as he's flying into the temple is flying, as we said before, is really, really slow. So he's going to try to skip as many flying flowers as he has to. So he's going to do a little bit of movement here to skip a flower hover and uh, saves about seven seconds. This is another case where just some basic movement works to um, get you somewhere you're not supposed to go. You can just backflip up onto this branch. Yep. Now, the other thing he's going to do here is equip Zora Mask directly from Deku Mask. And he does that because when you equip a Transformation Mask from human form, there's a little cutscene that you can't play. But if you already have a Transformation uh, Mask equipped, that cutscene doesn't play. And uh, now he's playing Song of Double Time to advance it to the second day. Um, and he wants it to be the second day because after we finish Woodfall Temple, we're going to be getting the bottle. And uh, it's a little bit faster to get it in the second day because you can get it from the witch uh, who's looking for her sister in the Woods of Mystery. Yeah, that's the fastest bottle to get. There are six bottles in this game, but that's by far the best one to get. Nice. Very cool little mega flip onto that yeah. little piece of torch there he can yeah. land on. It's scary. So that, uh, that pause that he did at the beginning is actually frame perfect, and it sets the angle perfectly uh, to do the mega flip onto that torch. And this yeah. is the first mini boss in the game. Yep. Um, the pathing is RNG, uh, but if we get some good RNG, you can just dispose of him quickly with two quick jump slashes. Nice. That's Beautiful. Good. He tried to run away a little bit to the side. Yeah, but... yeah that, was, that was close. So objective one is complete. We now have the bow. Now we just got to do the Bosky skip. Mm -hmm. Yep. Definitely a big trick coming up yeah. here again. So we should explain this now before he gets to the setup. The Bosky skip, uh, the way the the boss loading zones work, that they're behind all the boss doors, of course, and they're available from any point in the dungeon. They're always loaded, similar to the whole grottos always being on the same map thing. The loading zone for the boss is always there no matter what map you're in. So if you get out of bounds to an area that you can reach that loading zone, regardless of where you are in the temple, as long as Link touches that loading zone, he can just enter the boss room without having to use the boss key. Yeah. So there you saw him do a staircase hover, which is where we just do two hovers off, both off of bombs kind of difficult, you need specific setups to do it, so he throws one off the wall there and it bounces. And it lands in a, a nice spot so that he can hover off one bomb and then hover off another immediately after. That's perfect. Perfect. So those mega flips are nice very, very yeah. good. Yeah. And that is definitely that the is, scariest that's trick in the run. The I think it's a trick. huge time loss. It would be probably missing. five minutes. Four or five yeah. minute time yeah. loss. That, that, that. That's, a big, that's a big one. I feel Weight off your shoulders. That. <laughs> <laughs> so what he's going to do here for Dwala is he's going to shoot uh, a bow at him to hopefully get good RNG and make him jump at you. And then with some precise quick spins. Uh, oh, that RNG. Oh, my god! I jinxed it. <laughs> But with some precise quick spins, he can stun lock him and dispatch of him pretty quickly. Nice. That was hey, very good. good one. Very good. OK. Just quick spinning that much in sequence is hard enough by itself. But yeah. You have to time certain quick spins in that sequence pretty precisely. So mm -hmm. that's very difficult. Yeah. So one of the differences between the Japanese version and the English version is that there is no such thing as power crouch stabbing in the English version. And what a power crouch stab is, is it's a Japanese exclusive trick. Um, it's actually also an Ocarina of Time. And what it, when, you, when you do an, a, a move, any jump, like a jump slash or like a slash or anything, your power crouch stab or your crouch stab, which is the move that you get by holding the R button and pressing sword, will have the damage properties of the move you did before. So if you do a jump slash with a Deku stick, which is a really powerful attack, all of your crouch stabs will do that damage. So one of the strategies in Japanese version is to do power crouch stab with a certain thing, like a Deku stick, get that damage value, and then you only need to hit the boss like three or four times, and it'll just mm -hmm. be defeated really quickly. So because that's not possible in this version, we have to do quick spins. And it's very possible to have similar timings in the fights. Like, they're not slower or faster, but it does become a little trickier because, like Sausage said, you have to time the quick spins, which is not easy. Yeah, I, I believe for, for Adalwa, <laughs> We were forced to spend a lot of time, because we didn't have power crouch stabs, we, when we switched to the English version, we spent a lot of time like trying to optimize that and figure out a consistent strat. And we figured out one, but it's pretty hard, but it actually ends up saving a little bit of time over Japanese strats. Mm -hmm. So this song we're learning here is Oath to Order, and it's the song he's going to use um, after he defeats all four bosses to uh, summon the giants 
to stop the moon from crashing into the Earth. Um, uh, there's actually, there's, as we said before, there's no way to circumvent uh, saving all of the giants at each of the four temples. Um, there's no, there's plenty of theorized moon warps, uh, but none of them have actually mm -hmm. come to fruition yet. But fortunately, this is the only giants cutscene we're gonna have to watch until the very end. We won't have to yeah. watch the cutscenes after right. the other three dungeons. Yeah. We just have to watch this first one to learn the song. Right, exactly. And then, and then the rest. The first, first one is required to later. learn the song, and then after that, it's just, you can skip the rest of them. What's yeah. interesting about this route is that we actually do the first two dungeons in the correct order. Mm -hmm. But in previous iterations of the route, we actually did three out of four of them out of order, yeah. except for Stone Tower. That was always the last one. Mm -hmm. So it's definitely changed a lot. And the reason we did that is because there is a cutscene coming up after the Giants cutscene uh, that doesn't play if you don't beat Woodfall first. So it's a little bit faster because you don't have to watch uh, this cutscene and uh, Tattle talking to you. Exactly. It just happens to work out that even watching this cutscene by doing Woodfall first still ends up being the fastest way to beat the game. Yeah. So coming up is, I guess, after all these cutscenes is a another Hess, but it's off of a very difficult setup where you have to drop a bomb in midair, make it land on a lily pad, yeah. and then when you land in the water, turn Zora so that you can stand up because Zora's taller than Human Link, yeah. and then do a Hess. And yeah. it's it's it is tricky. I, this is actually my favorite trick here coming up. It's it's a little flashy. If I fail it, it's not a big deal. Yeah, but, but uh, there are three back-to-back -back very big Hesses coming up. Yes. Uh, yeah. Before and we then get into Snowhead. The big one, which is the Lullaby Skip Hyper Extended Super Slide that I mentioned at the beginning. It's coming up very soon. You guys better prepare yourselves because it's unbelievable. Yeah. Could maybe squeeze like one donation in. Yeah, because this is yeah, probably your last chance for a little yeah. while. I was gonna say, let yeah. me know between all this when I can read for you. Yeah. I'll make them real quick, okay? Good. We got fifty dollars from Anonymous, who says my smile is ready for Snowhead. Yes, yes. You've got this, Pope. Jake on style. <laughs> We've also got fifteen dollars from Thiefug81. Hi, Thiefug. Who says Pope running Majora's Mask, Phil and Sausage on the couch, and Kung Fu hosting? All right. Take my money already. <laughs> One day I'll join you guys again. One day. All right. All right, here we go. Nice. Beautiful. Nice. It's not, it's not over yet, though. Yeah. <laughs> It's convenient that the Zora model is the perfect height to stand up in the water because otherwise yeah, no, you right. need to swim. You're going to notice a little thing here. Uh, he's going to purposely stop his Hess here. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's because he needs to look away from the from the hut <laughs> until he gets past that little tree, basically. And, be, and that prevents the cutscene with the witch going into the forest from activating. But the witch will already be in the forest anyway. So nice. that cutscene definitely takes a little bit of time. And uh, normally you have to talk to a monkey to lead you through the Woods of Mystery, but if you already know the path, you could just test right through it and it saves about eight seconds. Yep, the path actually changed from previous routes because depending on what day you go into the woods has a different path. So this is day two path. Mm -hmm. In previous routes, we would do day one path, which looked a little bit different. Yep. So he talks to that witch, and then he comes back to the other witch and gets the bottle with a red potion in it that he's supposed to give to that witch who's injured. But he's just going to take it and run. Yeah. <laughs> we don't All actually right, help them. So <laughs> coming up is the big showcase here. This is the biggest trick in the run. Um, we need to get our smiles on for this We one. need absolute so we, we silence. We need absolute, absolute silence as well, yes. Smi smile and silence. Smile for Snowhead. <laughs> <clears throat> you got this, dude. Ooh, that's tight. There we go. Nice. All right, hard part's over. Just 
We're gonna cut it there, yep. <laughs> Beautiful, so you got on the uh, Okay. I'm it's gonna not, wait this one out. It's not completely over yet. It's not over. Um, if that snowball hits him or any snowball, yeah. he will fall and have to do it again. You do have an extra chew, though, if you need to use it. Yeah, absolutely. There's a little safe spot here, actually. You can hang out with this guy. A little close. Yeah. <laughs> so oh what makes God. that hard is the wind is just constantly blowing, and the wind mm -hmm. is highly dependent on RNG. Yeah. So you can't really predict when you're going to get blown, for how long you're going to get blown, yeah. and also, you can just get stuck on edges randomly if you get blown at the wrong Yeah, time. the angles really are very bad. precise. The textures are weird around Snowhead. Nice, we did it. Stuff. Wow. <laughs> that trick is honestly as difficult to do as it looks. Yeah. It's unbelievable. Going backwards, dodging snowballs, dodging wolves. Oh, we got bombs too. Nice. Yeah, we Beautiful. Did. Okay, good our safety bombs here. <laughs> All right, so Snowhead, two big objectives, get the fire arrow and defeat Goat. Mm -hmm. Ooh, that, that was interesting. interesting. That's been happening to me lately. Not a big deal. Yeah, you just void out here. Anything, if you just put on a mask like Zora or Deku in fire, you just void out and start at the top of the... Actually, you know what I can do here is I'm going to do this, and then we'll go the classic route here. There we go. Save a bomb. Nice. Yeah. Cool. Okay. This so, next room's a bit scary. Yeah. Every, everything in here is pretty scary. <laughs> you have an That's extra troop, though. <laughs> nice. Perfect. Beautiful. Okay. Beautiful. You have to be in a pretty precise position to uh, be able to side hop up and grab the ledge and not get owned by those spikes and yeah. knock down. These are tricks called long jumps. Uh, the explosive I'm gonna grab those. launches you further than you're able to go. Okay, <laughs> looking pretty good so far. Yeah. Uh, so what he's gonna do here is he's gonna turn around and stab the wall twice and slash his Deku stick, and that actually puts his Deku stick in sort of a glitch state, which allows him to slash it as many times as he wants, and you can do more damage to this mini boss. Like we said earlier, jump slashing with a Deku stick does a lot of damage. Yep. Yeah. But since, since we don't have power crouch stabs on the English version, we have to uh, do this instead. This was actually so perfect RNG. Normally, there's a cutscene that triggers after you hit the wizard robe two times, but there's a two frame or three frame window where you can actually hit the wizard robe before the cutscene starts, and you can just get a quick fight that way. I believe it's a one frame window, but is it one frame? because your stab is in there multiple frames. Mm -hmm. Oh, that makes sense. Or your jump slash, yeah. So the next trick that he's going to do after he gets the fire arrows is called Song of Time Storage. He's going to clip out of bounds uh, from the map and then play his ocarina and play Song of Time. And uh, what that does is it uh, basically, he stores the Song of Time text box so for later use. Um, so he's able to save his game and skip a cutscene after he defeats Goat. No backup needed. Nope. nope. Yeah, so that that song of time is stored now in memory, and it'll activate once a, any text box appears. The next time text comes up, and so we will intentionally avoid text boxes. Not that we really want any to come up here anyway. Oh, don't fall down. Okay. Ah! You got this. Move the movement on this ice is very it, it, it is very. Sometimes. And if you yeah, if you uh, mess this time. clip up. I'm just going to shoot it. <laughs> there is movement you can do through there, but it's okay to just shoot it. Yeah, you can backflip through that ice. It's yeah. English only. It's English yeah. only. It only saves about three seconds, but mm -hmm. it's a nice additional little time save. You have time for a real quick donation? Uh, yeah, go for it. Okay. We have a $250 donation from Link100. He says, Hut! So he can actually super slide and clip through these snowballs, and it's uh, faster than shooting them with fire arrows. Okay, now the boss key skip. So the one in Woodfall, we did from a different room. This one, we can actually just go around the door. Nice. nice. Beauty. Cool. So this boss fight is fun because this late in the run, because of RNG, you can just randomly lose 40 seconds. Yes. Yeah. Lose TV face <laughs> if a stalactite falls in the uh, spot that you're trying and to. Blocks your arrows. Yeah. 
It happens less often than more, but it definitely... I feel like the game knows when you're on a really it good run. It definitely happens more on PvP. Yeah, yeah, you're on the best run oh, ever, yeah. and it just happens. Yeah. So the way Goat's AI works is he will... You'll basically, you're supposed to chase him around this uh, circle with Goron Mask, but uh, as soon as you get a certain distance away from him, he stops and waits for you to turn around. And uh, as Hope stands on this specific spot, uh, he can't turn and shoot you, so you're able to just sit there and fire arrows into his face. So if you don't side hop, you saw, like, Pope did a little bit of a side hop and then went back to the spot he was in. Nice fight, by the way. That was awesome. Yeah. Yeah. He, um, he side hopped because Goat started shooting lightning, and that resets the time that he's standing there before he charges. So it yeah. gives him an extra bit of time to shoot more arrows at Goat before we, he starts. We time that cycle perfectly so that he starts running towards you right at the end of the fight, and the fight ends right here, so the boss remains yeah. up right there. So he yeah. activated his Song of Time text box, and he presses yes, he wants to save the game, and then resets his console to skip the cutscene at the end of... Uh, the that, that's game. important because you can't actually play Song of Time. The thing I want to point out, actually, is um, there's no really safety saving in this game, and um, if anything were to happen where I would have crashed in the last half hour, it would have been pretty bad. Yeah. So I'm glad that we got a little save in there. Back to, like, the 20 minute, 21 minutes. Yeah, it would have been... Yep. yep. Yep, yeah. you would have had to watch Song of Healing <laughs> to become human again. Yeah. But we're going to use that trick again to skip the remaining Giants cutscenes mm -hmm. uh, by storing Song of Time through different wings. So now we're in cycle three, and Pope needs to buy more explosives. And instead of running around, he can do his uh, gainer with Zora and just get the chest really easily. And unfortunately, that is the last gainer we're going to see. I guess I can go ahead and explain Shoe Crap a little bit. Yeah. yeah. Um, so. Here he has to like refill explosives. He used all of all of his explosives during cycle two because when you play Song of Time, everything gets reset to zero. He has zero bombs and zero bomb shoes. Um, but so he's gonna um, buy explosives here and then sort of stone tower, and then he's gonna do a glitch called Chew Crap. And the way that he does that is it's a little complicated, but he uses the relatively new trick called Equip Swap, and he puts. Choose, he equips choose over a different inventory slot. So in the pause menu, that white box that's normally there when he has an item equipped, it'll actually be over a different item, but he'll have choose equipped there. So he'll get it on his C button, but the game won't think in the pause menu that he has choose equipped. And then he can do another glitch, a bottle duplication glitch, to put a bottle over the choose slot in his, in his inventory. Mm -hmm. And so then the next time he plays Song of Time, the game will look at his inventory and say, oh, there's a bottle there. That doesn't need to get reset to zero. But he still has his shoes on his C button that he's had all along from doing a quip swap. It's a very useful trick because that way he doesn't have to go and get more explosives after he plays Song of Time in the following set. Exactly. So that's the last bomb shop trip that you just saw. He's doing two crap now. Yeah. So you'll see he has two bomb shoes equipped. And he's going to turn the real ones, because they're on the real bomb shoe slot, into a bottle and keep the other ones over the inventory slot that's not bomb shoe. So one interesting thing about that is, since he doesn't have shoes in his inventory anymore, if he equips over his bomb shoes by accident at any point for the rest of the run, they're gone. They're gone. He would have to like completely change his his routing and uh, do some weird backups. He just have to go buy more explosives. So, it wouldn't be that bad. So right there, he did a glitch called Time Stop. It's basically a way of having a cutscene that you can move around in. Because in this game, cutscenes take priority. So if you're in a cutscene, a subsequent cutscene won't start until the first one completes. And Time Stop is the state of trying to empty a bottle, but you're able to move in it because you stop the motion of him emptying the bottle. Mm -hmm. And so he stands on the platform, he gets the platform to where it's close to him so you can jump on it, and then he jumps on the platform, cancels time stop, and then the second cutscene, which is the platform, goes back to the front of the temple so he can skip having to get the elegy of emptying. Mm -hmm. And that, by the way, was a cool trick called Super Swim. Yeah, that was where awesome. you can maintain your momentum from that bomb that he used to clip him through that wall. Mm -hmm. You can maintain it infinitely as Zora by just rising and sinking in alternation, pressing A and B pretty quickly um, back and forth. Mm -hmm. It's like and a rhythm. It's like it's like Zora Link gets stuck in the animation of rising and then sinking. Yeah. Yeah. Normally you're supposed to use either the mirror shield or light arrows to get through this room, but we can just use bomb hovers and. Uh, Oop. Not a big deal. The bow there can get in the way sometimes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But you can just use bomb hovers to get up yeah, on top you of this the block. Bomb. Beautiful. This is one of the best rooms in the entire game, the updraft room. There are these updrafts, and you can just use them to maintain your um, velocity backwards and give you give yourself a boost. Oh, that was kind of close. It requires some really weird, precise setups. Um, 
But if you hold a certain direction, you can just float through these updrafts mm -hmm. and land at the end. Cool. All right, so coming up here, we're going to get the uh, light arrow. And the only reason this is needed is to flip the temple. Otherwise, we'd be skipping it. Um. Okay, they're actually getting some good luck here, too, as well. There are a bunch of little RNG elements scattered throughout that lose like one, two, three seconds, but not a, not a huge deal. Yeah. Good job. That was a good fight. Very nice. Mm -hmm. Can we throw in a donation real yeah, quick? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Go for it. Okay. Everyone, we have an anonymous $2,000 wow. donation. Oh, baby. Woo! <laughs> Thank you so much to our anonymous donator who says, Legend of Zelda speedruns are the most beautiful art. <laughs> Proud to donate to the Prevent Cancer Foundation and their important work. So now we have Light Arrow, and the only time we actually use Light Arrow in this run is to invert the temple. Because you can't get into the boss load zone uh, if the temple's not inverted. Um, so he's going to do a trick coming up here called Bow Extension to extend his bow through the texture of the floor and shoot the switch with a Light Arrow. Uh, to be able to invert the temple. The old way to do this actually used a bomb, but because bombs are a little bit tight, this is a nice little way of doing it without having to sacrifice any bombs. And if you have really good aim, it can even be faster yeah. than, than the old way. Shasta Skater for that one, he actually um, found that pretty recently, so mm -hmm. it's good. Just kind of poke your bow through the texture. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, so upside down section of this temple is pretty cool. There's some really neat jumps you're about to see. Uh, the first one is the bomb boost to the side. Uh, there's this platform that is located to the right of this little area where he's going to place a bomb, and he's going to damage boost to the right and grab the ledge. It's a pretty, pretty cool trick. I think it's one of my favorites, honestly. It's pretty precise to set it up as quickly as he does. But the trick, the trick speaks for itself, you'll see. Right here. Very nice. nice. Amazing. So. Okay, so... He's going to store Song of Time again here to skip the cutscene when he defeats Twin Mold. And you have very little time to actually play that yeah, before you avoid voiding it. out. <laughs> really quickly. Okay, I'll okay, silence there really for a cool. second. Okay, good. Beautiful. Okay. That boss key skip is pretty scary because you don't have one that, too yeah. many uh, visual cues to go off of. So the interesting thing is that boss key skip was actually done in the 2015 run at AGDQ 2015. And for two years, we did a different one. And now it's back again because it ended up being faster. Yeah. So it's cool how it kind of just got integrated back into the run. It all has to do with how many explosives you have. And for a while, we didn't have any bomb chews on this cycle. But now that we have equip swap, we can do that chew crap thing I talked about earlier, which uh, lets us have bomb chews for every cycle. So Twin Mold's interesting. It's kind of like a Pokemon where it's super effective to use certain nice arrows. Try. It was good. Very good. And the blue Twin Mold is weak to fire arrows, and the red Twin Mold is weak to ice arrows. So we have fire arrows. They're triple of super effective on them, so it does Typically, a regular arrow will do two damage. They've got 20 health, so 10 arrows kills a twin mold. But because fire arrows do triple, you can do four fire arrows to KO one of the, the blue one. But mm. because we don't have ice arrows, they're located in Great Bay Temple, and they're kind of out of the way. Um, you, he could use ice arrows, but it's not necessary because he doesn't have that much magic. So that is yeah, that's really yeah, very that's unfortunate RNG. Luck. Yeah, yeah. The, the twin mold's patterns are completely random, so he has to kind of act on the fly and he's going to have to hit it 10 times with regular arrows. The difficult thing about the red one is once you kill the first one, the second one starts moving a little quicker, so his aim has to be a little more precise. Mm -hmm. And you really don't want to run out of arrows it's, in this fight. It's good to take this slow for a marathon because running out of arrows is uh, very yes, difficult. Yeah. Not good. If you ran out of arrows in that situation, do you see those pillars all over the place? Typically in this fight, casually you'd have a giant's mask and you could go and break those things and get arrows, magic, all that good stuff. But because he doesn't have Giant's Mask, he'd have to have the Twin Mold break it for him so he could see if he gets a drop. And it's not even guaranteed. Yeah. 
He's having some really good shots. Another thing about I'm Song not really, Time, yeah. another thing about Song of Time storage is it actually won't activate after you defeat the boss. So he has to activate it before cool. he kills Flint Mold and uh, shoot it with the text box activated. That's, that's definitely I, spooky because running out of arrows there is very it's scary. It's a huge time oh. loss and gets really uh, frustrating trying to go around and collect them in the sand. Also, the aiming is just very precise. Like, the, the control stick movements that you have to do, there's a lot of finesse to that. And we're going to okay. reset to skip the cutscene, and third cycle is over. Let's go. So we've got one dungeon left. One yep. more, and then the big guy. Making some good time right now. We got time for some donations. I actually just want to read some donations. Mm -hmm. I was about to ask. Okay, we have a $50 donation from Paul Fisher, 53, who says, hey, listen. It gives me great joy to donate to a great cause. Thanks to all the awesome runners, and good luck. I'm over the moon that you're running my favorite Zelda game. Okay. I know. <laughs> nice. Collective groan. <laughs> We've also got a $20 donation from Hookshot4. He says, did you say you didn't need me anymore? I thought we had something special. How could you? <laughs> and $100 from Caddy57. He says, I had to donate during my favorite game. Best of luck, my dude. So he tried to set up another super swim there. Um, it's, it's a bit tricky getting in the exact position and then very quickly doing a backflip after sending the chew. You send the chew and it's, it blows up when it hits the owl statue yeah. and you um, get pushed back by that explosion mm -hmm. into a super swim. And you see him dolphin diving there because it's actually faster to dolphin dive in the water than it is to just swim underwater. It's actually a bit hard for me to see right now, so I'm going to go ahead and do this. Mm -hmm. That's cool. So we're going to explain equip swap and basically what's going to happen to get into a bossa nova. At the beginning of the run, I mentioned that he's going to have one egg and he's going to copy it six times and instead of having to go to all the different parts where all the eggs are located, like in the Pirate's Fortress. Um, so there's three here and four in Pirate's Fortress. It's faster, if you're gonna get one, it's faster to come to Pinnacle Rock, pick up one egg, and then soar out. And the reason for that is because there is a trick called uh, Ocarina Items, which the Zora can actually perform underwater because it's able to be in a standing state. So what you're gonna see Pope do is he's gonna pick up the egg, and then he's gonna do a little motion, and it's gonna trigger an underwater Ocarina, and he can just Song of Soaring back to the platform where the lab is. Oops. Oh. Oh, give it a sec. Make sure you release and then repress the stick if you're... I'm just going to do it this way. Okay. There yeah, that's okay. cool. Perfect. There you go. Underwater Ocarina. Cool. And then he gets out of there. So that's really nice. And um, once we get into the observatory, you're going to see him do the trick called Equip Swap. The way it works is it's a frame-perfect trick, and it can only be done on the pause menu, which makes it even more tricky because you can't pause buffer anything on the pause menu. And the pause menu actually runs at 30 frames per second, while the regular game runs at 20 frames per second. So right. It, so it's more precise. When the trick first came out, everybody was just kind of pausing and then doing this trick over and over again, yeah. which is done by... I remember those days. <laughs> yeah, we had to go back to a... Di we, you have to tab to the right on the pause menu and then tab back, and you have to do a, a specific input on one frame nice. like that, and it'll copy the egg. So you just saw him get an egg equipped on a C button. That is not the original egg that he got. That is a second egg. Yep. And so he's going to do that six times, and then the seventh time, he's just going to drop the first egg he picked up. You'll then, see that he has a, a bottle there where he had light arrows before. Since we don't need light arrows for the rest of the run, we just do this, this dupe over the light arrow slot so that when he dumps an egg, the empty bottle that gets overwritten in your pause menu, it goes over the light arrow slot instead of uh, the bottle where he has his original egg. Exactly. Yeah. And so he's making it look easy right now, but it's actually it's really, really difficult. Very, it takes a ton of practice. It's very yeah. common for even top runners to fail this yeah. several times in a run. He's three for three right now. I've lost so many world record pace runs to this, I don't even want to think about it. Yeah. <laughs> it's really easy to get on tilt when you yeah. miss one. It's a, really stressful having this segment be at the end of the run, too, if you're on really good pace. Yeah. So that was five. We got one more. You might think this is a bit boring watching the same cutscene seven times in a row, but trust me, it's better nice. than what we had before where we had to go collect all the eggs. Yeah. But yeah, that was, that was perfect. Yeah, that, that was perfect. Was all those. That was pretty good. That was amazing. Nice but the thing about it, too, is it saved a ton of time. It saved, mm -hmm. like, five minutes or something, five, six minutes over the something previous like that. route. It was a big time save because I think the, uh, the record at the time was an hour 24 minutes, and after this was found, it dropped under 120 mm -hmm. pretty quick. Good. So we, that, we had a hard time routing around it at yeah. first when we first discovered the... I remember that. 
So there's normally a cutscene when you're done learning this song, but what Pope's going to do is, uh, you know, cutscenes take two frames to activate, so he's going to pause um, right after he pulls out his ocarina and prevent the cutscene from activating. And um, once the once you pull out the ocarina, you have the song. You don't need to watch the cutscene, so he can just soar out of the temple and not watch the cutscene that plays after he learns New Wave Bossa Nova. So that, he got the song right there. Cool. That's but it looks like he got nothing. All right. Coming up is the last temple here, and then Majora. Yep. So he's just, just going to be doing some. Yeah, he's going to be doing some pretty simple swimming movement. But coming yeah. up is is a frame perfect trick that's um, pretty spooky. Like toward the end of the run, if if you miss this, you would just have to watch a minute long cutscene. Um, he just has to pause on one particular frame. It's called then, turtle cutscene skip. Yep. And it, it's it's gonna skip the long cutscene of the turtle rising up from in the water. <laughs> it saves a minute if you get it. This is another one of those tricks that's frame perfect. And for a long time, a lot of people didn't really know how to go around doing it. For a very long time, a lot of people just mashed pause and hoping of getting the pause button to, to actually like register on the game. But so. over time, we found some visual cues that really helped us. And uh, getting consistent with this yeah. trick. Marathon He's, safety here. Yeah, so he, he just got a ferry for Majora later. Nice. Very good. Got the pause. Frame okay. perfect. Normally, you need the hook shot to shoot yourself on top of this turtle, but we're just gonna, like all other skips, use bomb hovers to get up there. Oh, that's okay. Actually, I'm gonna enter here again, just for a good backup. Mm -hmm. The turtle rises and falls on a certain cycle, so. There's, there's a bit of lag here, too. It's kind of hard to yeah. detect the lag. But he wants to go in here to basically reset that cycle so that he knows when he has to grab the ledge to climb up onto the turtle. Yeah, there's an invisible ledge that he's going to be grabbing that like gets really high and really low, and you can't see it. So. Nice. Very good. Beautiful. Nice. OK. So Awesome. You need to get bombs now, too. Yeah, I'm going to get some bombs. So one sad change about recent uh, rerouting is that we we do have to watch the pirate cutscene. We do, that, yes. That happens we, right we now. We actually used yeah. to be able to skip this with the, with the hook shot with a, uh, it was called uh, pirate cutscene skip. It was a uh, time stop glitch that we could do. But now, since we don't have the hook shot, we're just not able to do it. It, it was very difficult and didn't save very much time. Right. Uh, yeah, it wasn't even in the world record run for, for quite a while. We do it in 100% still, though, so that's cool. OK, I'm going to grab some extra bombs here and finish up this temple, and we should be on our way here. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so Great Bay Temple is really nice. Uh, this is a classic as far as tricks go, because it's been around forever. Yeah. But we're going to go to the boss from the first room. And this temple, honestly, only if he didn't get the bomb drop, ex the extra one, it would probably only take him 20 seconds. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's mm -hmm. really fast. Like, legit 20 seconds. But can never have enough bombs in this game. Yeah, yes. explosives are very tight. So you actually have perfect bomb count at this point in the run. So if you... Uh... Amazing. <laughs> Good bomb. <laughs> I know, right? If you waste one, unfortunately, you have to go get another drop. All right, so he's going to... Get into this corner, drop a bomb. The, the bomb's right in the corner, and the... Huh. Oh, a hang bit, on. bit too far from the corner. I think he was too yeah. far to the right, yeah. It's all good. I'm going to line up actually on here. But putting that bomb in the corner allows him to be clipped in bounds and remain in bounds because the bomb hit collision keeps him pushed in. There you go, like that. So he's going to start some that, time here. Before that bomb explodes, he's doing this uh, trick to Ocarina Dive as Zora. If you mess that up, you're going to get hit by the bomb. Yeah. So it's pretty cool. And then he has to do this again now that he's stored Song of Time for skipping the Giants cutscene later. He does it again to actually get to the boss room. And the boss loading zone is located just to the right of this where he's facing. One nice recoil flip 
which Very is done by shielding a bomb and backflipping. You get in there. You just right in. He's going to do a bit of a forgotten trick here called a weird shot, which will put his perspective below the floor. Beautiful. And it's uh, going to allow him to shoot Gyorg. Right there, it looks like. Might miss. <laughs> yeah, I did miss him. OK, that's not a big deal. Yeah. So the fast fight there is you um, hit him with the arrow, and he's in a, he, he exists there already. So if you hit him, he becomes stunned. And it avoids having to watch this cutscene trigger. But um, it's not a big deal if you miss it. But um, Everyone watching probably couldn't even see what you were looking at for that visual cue. I, I, I you could have hardly to, see it. Yeah, that's, that's the <laughs> thing about really doing this. Hard. Very, very precise shot at the very end doing of the this, run, Doing so. this at a marathon, like you're not at your normal setup. Right. You have to have the brightness cranked up to a certain level to see in the dark where you're right. shooting. And I, also, think, I think I might have been a little low there. But. On the plus side, we get to hear the boss music now. Yes, we do. <laughs> that's actually pretty rare for this now. So. I was going to say, the weird shot is an interesting trick. It dislocates the first-person camera from where Link is positioned, and you can aim it with, depending on which weird shot you do, because like it's based on what frame you do the trick. Uh, one frame lets you go below, and one frame lets you go to the front and to the right. So that one was below, and it put him out of bounds, and he was able to shoot something he originally wasn't able to get into in the first place. But it was scary because, like we said before, on the English version, if he advanced too many frames trying to do this trick, it would have crashed his game. Yeah. Like, hard crash. We have to have to hard reset the console. And you have to do the whole cycle over. Exactly. Maybe like, four or five minute time loss. So very scary. One of the differences between Japanese and English is that, so you can see the Zora barrier is being used while he's in a floating stance. And on Japanese, you can only use Zora barrier when you're swimming, but at full speed. But on on English, they made it so that you can do it while you're just floating in the water. So it makes the Gyro fight a lot easier because you can just kind of rise and sink instead of having to keep it, the swimming. Motion. It makes that aspect of it easier. If if he had been able to show off the uh, the weird shot, um, arrow hitting and doing the fast fight like that, that part is, becomes a lot harder, but also yes. much faster. Yes. Yeah, much faster. So okay. now we have all four boss remains, and it is time to go to the top of the clock tower and activate the endgame sequence mm -hmm. and stop the moon from crashing into the Earth. Or into Termino. Got time for a little donation? Yeah. yeah. Awesome. We have a $100 donation from Emily Midwest, <laughs> <laughs> who says, good luck, Sacky Snacky. <laughs> 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 We all love and support you here on the back couch. J-Con style. Less than three. <laughs> nice. Good job. Nice. OK. So we are headed to Majora now. We've got a big cutscene. And uh, an interesting thing about this fight coming up here is it is by far the most dangerous Majora fight this game has ever seen, which is pretty exciting. But luckily for us, we have a fairy ready to go. So. In case anything bad happens, we are able to use that. So, yeah, this, All right. <laughs> a couple of years ago, I, I, I want to say, um, it, it was unthinkable to do this fight on the English version the way that we do. Yes. Uh, the way that we do now in runs without really even thinking about it. Um, we've we've come up with a lot of strats um, for how to manage the RNG. There's a lot of RNG in the fight, and we've just, I guess, gotten better. Yeah. <laughs> we got good. All right. Um, I actually wanted to make a um, special shout out to my cousin Allison. She uh, was recently diagnosed with uh, pediatric cancer, and she's actually doing a really good job at fighting through it right now. And I'm just really just proud of her, and I just wanted to let her know. So, yeah. and shout out to uh, her brother Jackson as well. They're both just really great. So. All right, um, and we got time for donations for yeah, a bit. Yeah, this is a really well, long it is. scene. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have a skit for this one, unfortunately, but. <laughs> it would be nice. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> so dramatic. I know, right? <laughs> I'm used to lots of loud noise with this. Yeah. <laughs> So we're actually um, pushing this game to uh, around 113 range right now with the current strats that we have. And I mean, that's passing by right now. It's pretty crazy to think. So yeah. hopefully we can reach that um, within the next like few years. 
That'd be amazing. This one's on track to be under an hour 20, man. It is, actually. We are on track said. to be uh, an hour and 19 minutes. So if this goes well, then it'll be probably 119. So. Yep. That'd be cool. That's a pretty crazy run. And uh, yeah. like, like Pope was saying, like, I, I think 2019 will be a pretty big year for MM any percent oh, speed running because we've sure. just discovered like a lot of new strats. Mm -hmm. uh, the human protractor over here especially has made just a ton of setups that are um, for tricks that were previously thought pretty much impossible. Yeah. Yes. Um, and there's just <laughs> been a lot of work on this game recently. It's pretty cool to see, and it, it, it'd be cool to see uh, an interest with uh, just other runners in the future for sure. Yeah. So. If you thought this explosive count was tight, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the new route is uh, going to be really not a lot of room for error. Want a few more donations? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, please. Great. <laughs> we have a $50 donation from Jazz McNerdy, who says, must respect a mid-run melodica performance. First donation, great cause. Keep it up. We've also got a $50 donation from Majin Phil's cat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Ch I said cat. It was Chad. Oh. My bad. Oh, Chad. That would have been Those really funny, though. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's what I really wanted it to be. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> the chat says, we're here, all of us, <laughs> watching. Good luck, Majin D. <laughs> We've also got an $11 donation from Sean Tron once again, who says, thanks for reading my Zelda rhyme. Here's the 10 rupees I promised, and another bonus rupee. Cheers, GDQ. <clears throat> yeah, it's been a uh, great experience up here. I've been looking forward to this for a while, so. I definitely had a great time. This is such a difficult game to do at a marathon. Yeah, like, it is. This, like, this run Pope is, is making crazy. it look very easy. <laughs> it's, it, I've just played it so much from the past few months that I felt like I was ready to do it here. But it is very, very difficult to do this route. And uh, the, the, uh, the nature of this run with the explosive counts and the fact that you can just fail one of those boss key skips at the last second to just being one frame off on yeah. some tiny thing. Especially on the English version, like all these tricks that you're seeing, mega flips and hesses, you know, if you target at the wrong time, you crash your game completely. Mm -hmm. The uh, the other thing is that for a long time, a lot of people didn't want to do mega flips in marathon runs because they were deemed un, like they're just not run friendly because they're so risky, yeah. and they're they're definitely the hardest trick to do off a bomb. Yeah. Because yeah. of the just the nature of how to perform one, and. Um, yeah, this, it, it's pretty remarkable to see how far it's come to the point where we're actually integrating them into marathon runs. And now there's 12, I think, in the run? Yeah, <laughs> there's a, a lot. There's a lot, yeah. yeah. We're, we're, we're trying to narrow it down a bit so that we get a bit less with different setups that are more <laughs> difficult, but um, yeah, there's, there's a lot That makes of them. it more difficult, not less difficult. So You'd rather be doing a mega flip at that point. Yeah, this trick here coming up, I actually have enough shoes for this, which is great, but um, it's the, uh, hang on. Uh, I think I missed it. No, I didn't. Nice. Nice. Okay. Cool. Yeah, so hessing off choose is really difficult, but if you have two, you can uh, save about eight seconds by hessing up to uh, the child here to activate that. And All right. Wins. So we're going into Majora. Let's go. This fight's very difficult. But very difficult and very RNG dependent in the yes. second phase especially. The third phase a little bit as well. Let's go sub 120, man. Let's go. It's gonna be super tight if for sub 120, but let's see. We gotta depend on some good luck here for sure. Yeah. This I fight believe. is actually over pretty quickly before, but it's a little bit more drawn out now because of the lack of uh, the powered crouch set that we have. This fight Chucky. is especially scary because any damage instance you take is a full heart, and we only have three hearts here, so it's really, really, you know, of paramount importance that he takes no damage. So a couple things to note about this fight. There's three phases. First phase is the Mask phase, second phase is Incarnation, and third phase is Wrath. Uh, the hardest phase is definitely phase two because that is the most RNG heavy section. And you can get hit by the Mask. They shoot orbs that can damage you a lot. And with only three hearts, it's very risky. Uh, so there's a couple of cool things we figured out, like camera manipulation. If you target and look away, you can stop them from shooting orbs at you in certain situations, like if you're near a wall. Um, and for the Wrath fight, in the past, for whatever reason, if you have light arrows equipped, 
whether you have magic or not, a light arrow, Majora's Wrath will not dodge them. But regular arrows or any other type of elemental arrows other than light will be dodged by Majora. So you actually have to interrupt an attack in order to land a stun. Yeah. So, so right here, what we really want is for Majora to just run into him at the beginning of this phase and fall down. Totally random. To his uh, Zora magic random. barrier. I can get a bit out of hand if yeah, he doesn't. The, the quick stun is really cool. And uh, I hope you get it, man. You got it like three times yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> Not quite. Rip. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Never when you need it most. Oh, okay, there are the orbs. But he's got fairies, so don't worry. Mm -hmm. Ooh, that's okay. Okay. All right. Bust out the fairy. So the nice thing about equip swap is we can actually use it here and have infinite fairies. Please don't hit me again. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I don't need to choose anymore, so I can... Okay, oh. now he's just faking me out. I don't know what's going on here. There we nice. go. Good stun. Okay. That's bad. So this is just really bad RNG, because he has to be doing this right in the middle of the arena, so he can't be reliably facing away from the masks that only shoot you when you're looking at them. Yeah. Many, many. a really good job. Okay. Nice. nice. Yeah. All right, we're coming up on time here soon, actually. That was another one of those fights where using the uh, power crouch stabs would have made it much easier on the Japanese version. But because, yeah. again, we don't have those, the spin attacks are the alternative. Lots of very, very good runs die to Majora just because of how complicated it is. A little more bad RNG there. So you can see Majora's Wrath dodging those things. You have to interrupt that attack. And now 20 jump slashes here. One. And time. let's go! <laughs> oh, I'm happy that went well. <laughs> All right. Awesome. Thank you again, everybody. It's been an honor. Good job, dude. That okay. was a good run. What a run, dude. That was yeah, amazing. That was pretty good. Nothing too so we've, terrible. We've cut, what, 14 minutes off from the last yeah, uh, so the GQ marathon, run? The yeah. marathon <laughs> personal best now is 121.07. Yes. Nice. That's awesome. All right. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> yeah! As JK in style, yes. <laughs> this is such a satisfying credits to see. It is. Of a, it such is. A difficult and of course, role. this is not the best music sequence in the game. Yes. <laughs> this is a huge relief. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> All right. Twenty-one oh seven. A little bit short of the sub one twenty, but definitely, honestly, just a relief that I made it through this run. <laughs> yeah, yeah, incarnation. It's, it's just such a dangerous run. There are very... so many points in the run that <laughs> yeah. can just go horribly and be massive time losses. So. Mm -hmm. Getting a lullaby skip first try is especially yeah, impressive. That, that was like pretty like cool. we said yeah. that that was a task only strat. Definitely the very highlight recently. of that. <clears throat> Definitely hundreds of hours put into that one trick alone. Mm -hmm. So I was hoping to read this during the run, but can I throw in a quick donation? Yeah, absolutely. yeah. Go for it. <laughs> this is just the credits now. Yeah, it is. Yeah. <laughs> there was a $50 donation from Saturn 
New Hockey, who said, hey, Pope Squidward, no chance you can make a quick detour, detour to complete the Anjou and Cafe side quest. <laughs> I wish I even knew how to do that. I, <laughs> honestly, I, I, I don't even know how to do it. <laughs> and donation goes to Runner's Choice. But man, I wish I had gotten time to read that one for you. <laughs> yeah, after you play any percent for so long, you just forget all yep. the other. <laughs> when was the last time you did that? Um, it was years ago. <laughs> I, when I was a kid, honestly, I, I haven't even played any of those side quests, so. Um, yeah. We could crash the game and go out with a bang. You yeah. know what? We could. Should we just reset the credits and do something fun here? I'm, I'm going to do that, actually. All right. So, shout outs to NOP112. I'm coming for you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I love you, dude. I love you, dude. <laughs> So as it stands right now, the world record is one hour, 15 minutes, and 59 seconds. And Pope Squidward's personal best is one hour, 16 minutes, and nine seconds. Ten seconds off. He's so, had so I, many runs I've been that stuck. were close in the late game. <laughs> I've been stuck with that time for like three months now. Okay, so we're just going to go out with a bang here. Just find, uh, actually, yeah, let's go do this. Yes. We're just gonna go over to this nice little Deku Baba here. This is the boss of the game. Majoro yes. actually wasn't the boss. This is the boss. I wish I knew how to do this first try. Just do it off the bomb if you can't get it. Yeah, you know what? We're gonna do it off the bomb. <laughs> I wanted to get a little creative with that, but let's 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 do it. Off you can one. do it off any damage source. Yes, but moving enemies are a difficult one. All right. Music to my ears, dude. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. So that's what can happen at yes. any point this, in the run. This could have happened at any point in the run, and it didn't. And I'm really happy that it did. Yeah, please so, turn the yeah, turn your volume up. <laughs> turn your volume up to max and embrace the noise. All right, right. it's amazing. Okay, cool. Thank you very much, everybody. Yeah, thanks, I, everybody. I appreciate it. What an awesome job by Pope Squidward. Congrats, dude. We are going to be going to some technical maintenance real quick. Need to handle that. Um, but I shall still be with you, so have no fear if the screen changes for a little bit. In the meantime, while they are doing some work, let's get in some donations. We have an anonymous $100 donation who says, thanks for running this gem. We have a $50 donation from Locke and Liam. This donation is done in memory of my Uncle Vic, who passed after a long fight with stomach cancer a few years back. Shout out to Pope Squidward, Majin Phil, and the rest of Majora's Mask speedrunning community. You all have been a source of support and encouragement to us, and we're so proud of what everyone here is accomplishing by participating in AGDQ. We have another $50 donation from Specs Fox who says, thank you for running MM. This is my favorite Zelda game. I remember Nintendo's creepy ads and it convinced me for a couple days that the moon might actually crash into the earth as a kid. So this game has stuck in my memory. Thank you for saving the earth from the moon in record time. Crash the moon into cancer instead. We also have a $500 donation from Namaha232 who says, great run and great commentary. You guys are the best. We have a $250 donation from Lo Nim, who says, Majora's Mask is the best Zelda game ever. No one will disagree because we already time traveled three days back in time and convinced them otherwise. And we have an anonymous $25 donation. And they say, Majora's Mask is one of my all-time favorite games. My wife and I played it together when we first started dating, and it always brings back those fond memories. I love you so much, Carissa. My dude for life. We have a $25 donation from Abby. 
donating for the first time on my birthday. Happy birthday, Abby. HEDQ helped me survive my last week of pregnancy last year, especially during the Link to the Past run. So I knew I had to donate this year. Love me some Majora's Mask. Thank you so much. Thank you. We have a $250 donation from Sora Trick, who says, first time ever donating and first time watching live. Majora's Mask is a work of art, and it's a thrill to see it played with such skill. Having lost my stepmom and grandpa to cancer, it means a lot that so many people can come together to fight back. Thank you. No, oh, thank you. <laughs> We have a $50 donation from Muga Buga, who says, I don't know much about speedrunning, but my boyfriend takes the entire week off for work for every GDQ. I'm currently trying to hide my phone screen, so this donation is a surprise, as he's been forcing me to watch all day. Although I don't really know what's going on, I'm glad that I was introduced to this amazing community and figured I would take this opportunity to help support a good cause. We have an anonymous $250 donation. He says, go fast. Whoa, we have another anonymous $1,000 donation. <laughs> Woo! Who says, it makes me so happy to watch this event and support an important cause. Thank you to everyone involved. Well, thank you for the support. Just want to remind you all of some challenges coming up. We need to hit some goals, you guys. Let's get some goals met. We have the Chimera Berserk mode coming up this evening. We are currently $751 out of the needed 3K. So if we can hit that $3,000 number, then you'll get to see the Berserk mode. We also have several Castlevania challenges that we can meet, including AOS All Bosses, an AOS Glitch Exhibition, and the bonus run of Castlevania 3, which we are currently just over a quarter of the way. Remember, every donation counts, every donation matters, and we thank you all so much for all of the support so far. We are almost at our first 100K, so keep those up. And let's get some of those awesome incentives met. Hope everyone's excited for that portal race coming up next. In the meantime, we can get in a couple more donations. We've got a $250 donation from Clay Moon. He says, hi. Well, hi. We have a $60 donation from Red Mage 3555 who says, thanks to all the runners and volunteers that make this amazing event happen. I'm having a great time, and I hope you all are too. We've got a $25 donation from Tychus, who says, Hi, GDQ, longtime watcher, and happy to give once again for a great cause. I lost my grandmother to cancer three years ago, and I spent a lot of time playing video games at her house. So this donation is, of course, in memory of her. Love from France. We have a 
$25 donation from Keep Swimming, who says, my mom has been in remission from lung cancer for six years. Congratulations. We caught her cancer at stage 1A. This foundation is incredible, and gamers coming together to do such good is awesome. As long as GDQ is happening, I'll be watching and donating when I can. Hype? We also have a $600 donation from... <laughs> yeah, get <good> hype. <laughs> this is from RunnerGuy2489, who says, this donation is for Sarah, Jonathan, and Zach. You guys are like family to me. It's been so difficult to see what cancer has done in so little time. And as a reminder to cherish every moment you have. Stay strong, guys. You have the support and love from the speedrunning community. Yeah, you do. We've got a $5 donation from Lion133. who says, AGDQ is the best way to kick off the new year. Thank you to all the event planners and staff, and good luck to all the runners. Let's beat cancer. We've got a $25 donation from Summer B76, who says, longtime viewer and donator. Figured I'd chip in while my boy Alex is about to race Connor and Portal. Good luck to him and keep up the great show for charity. We've also got a $60 donation from Salvatorium. Salvatorium says, I look forward to GDQ every year, and I'm glad I got to finally catch the first day. Great Majora's Mask run, and looking forward to many more great runs this week. Good luck to all the runners. We have a $50 donation from Jag149, who says, hype for some portal gameplay. First time watching this event. Let's win this fight against cancer. Wanted to do a quick shout out about one of our sponsors, ViewSonic. 
ViewSonic has built monitors for over 30 years. From CRT Tech to the first 1MS LCD monitors, there's a good chance you gamed on us first. ViewSonic Elite embodies that legacy, taking our gaming products in a new direction. ViewSonic.com slash gaming, if you guys want to check that out. We're also sponsored by World 9 Gaming. From PCs to arcades and consoles, consoles old and new, World 9 Gaming aims to provide the highest quality video gaming experience to events in the Midwest and beyond. With our dedicated staff, tournament expertise, and expansive collection of games and consoles, World 9 is ready to take your event to the next level. For more information and on booking and upcoming events, check world9gaming.com. have a couple more donations. We have a $100 donation from John K, who says, nothing beats the post MAGFest blues like AGDQ. Great run so far. Keep up the awesome work, everybody. We have a $75 donation from Get Hype Immediately. <laughs> Listen, there we go. <laughs> A name that works wonders. <laughs> he says, uh, for my mom that beat stage four cancer this year, 
more than happy to support this cause and love the event, guys. We've got a $15 anonymous donation who says, first time attending a GDQ event in person and having a blast so far. Best luck to all of the runners. We have a $250 donation from Sarah52. Sarah says, first time donating and wanted to get in on the action. My uncle was diagnosed with leukemia a while ago, and this is the inspiration for my donation. I'm honored to be able to put my money towards such a wonderful cause. We've got a $15 donation from Kate160, who says, hello, AGDQ. Thanks for making the week I go back to school more bearable. Put this towards the dog ending for Silent Hill, too. It'll make James's journey a little less rough and a little more rough. <laughs> we have a $60 donation from Mike Potions. Mike says, greetings from Arizona. This is the best week of the year. Using video games as a positive force in the world is inspiring. You all are awesome. We have a $25 donation from Joke COTF, who says, watch the event every year, but had to donate this year. My daughter was diagnosed with leukemia in July of last year, and it crushed my family. But I'm glad to say she's healthy and in remission. Thank you, AGDQ, for everything you do for cancer research. <laughs> and congratulations. We've got some bid wars for games coming up as well. God of War 2 has a costume choice bid war, which is still pretty close between God of War and Athena. So if you would like to see one over the other, make sure you get those donations in for that. It's coming up in just a couple of runs from now. We've also got things like the Catbird skin choice but you can pick gold or white or black, and they are all still pretty close as well, so that might be a neck and neck choice. You can also name the characters in Bloody Wolf, or pick Striker versus Ninja in Comet Striker, and some other things like that. So make sure you don't miss out on the awesome bid wars, and again, those incentives for the games coming up over the next couple of days. <laughs> 